welcome back guys and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about the pi3 kinase pathway or pi3k pathway now the one thing you should know about pi3k pathway the only one thing if you want to know is that this pathway is related with living of the cell because if you distinguish between two types of pathway that are found inside the cell one pathway is dealing with living of the cell and other pathways are death of the cell two different varieties of pathway that we can observe now in this case the pathway that we are going to see pi3k pathway it is dealing with the living portion there are pathways that are called death pathways or apoptotic pathways are also present in our body now ultimately it will help a cell to grow cell to divide proliferate and live longer so in this case this kind of pathway the pi3k pathway sometimes it is related with the pathway triad of our body that is PI3K, AKT, mTOR pathway. So often they are pronounced all together PI3K, AKT, mTOR pathway because all of these three materials like PI3K, AKT and mTOR all these mediators are very very important to ultimately make a cell living a healthy life and if the cell is living healthy we will live healthy definitely they are all related pi3k akt mtor in all this pathway though we'll have separate videos on all these different pathways but still this is very very important so we'll see all these things again and again so again like any other pathway what is the signaling molecule in this case the signaling molecule for this type of pathway which helps a cell to live is obviously growth factors it could be epidermal growth factor it could be platelet derived growth factor it could be fibroblast growth factor depending upon the type of cell it is that is the signaling molecule now what is the receptor in this case the receptor in this case is enzymatic now one of the example of receptor is rtk or better known as receptor tyrosine kinase so tyrosine kinase enzyme receptor that is obviously transmembrane receptors present so this tyrosine kinase receptors which are present in transmembrane condition they are two different units they are present embedded inside the cell membrane now once the growth factor will go and bind with the extracellular portion of the tyrosine kinase receptor it finally helps one of the tyrosine kinase to get phosphorylated once one of the tyrosine kinase gets phosphorylated it cross phosphorylate the other one and as a result the cross phosphorylation helps to activate the whole tyrosine kinase family protein here so once the tyrosine kinase is activated it will activate pi3 kinase there pi3 kinase is an important mediator there so once the pi3 kinase is activated inside now the pi3 kinase will further activate another protein that is akt now once the akt is activated it can activate further another protein called mTOR as I told you PI3K AKT mTOR and finally mTOR will activate proteins like S6K1 or 4EBP all these things are, are transcription factors or transcription mediators remember once the level is before the transcription mediators it's simple cell signaling but once it reaches the transcription factor level then those transcription factor can ultimately helps in transcribing the different genes into mRNA and they will be converted into proteins so finally then we'll see the act uh, in inside the cell so here the activation of pi3 kinase is a sequential event because you know it is phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinases that is the thing and we know this this pi3 kinase can not only be activated by by this RTKs or receptor tyrosine kinase, but they can also be activated by GPCR or G protein coupled receptors because we see in case of G protein coupled receptor, PI3 kinase can be activated because the phosphatidyl inositol has to deal with the G protein coupled receptor system. So, here this is the scenario again in this case, you can see that once the PI3K is activated, it will activate AKT, then finally they will activate the mTOR. So, once the mTOR is activated, mTOR will further activate other transcription factors, then then they will express certain genes which helps in cell proliferation cell survival and angiogenesis pathway now if this pathways remain constantly activated that can turn one normal cell into a cancerous cell obviously 
and if this pathway is completely halted then the cell will not grow it will die and the person will eventually die now here as you can see the pitk is at the heart and the start point of the pathway which is the indirect contact with the receptor tyrosine kinase or in the gpcr but except for that once akt is made from this section this akt can control p53 p27 this guardian genes inside our body so this is a huge the important pathway inside our body to, to make our body uh, to make a cell living or dead according to the situation okay so if you look at here how the pi3 uh, k is activated that's why i'm showing this this image again uh, let's say jgf or v vgf or egf are there so here vascular endothelial growth factor or epidermal growth factor so once they are present here you know PIP2 is a mediator that is that is present in the cell membrane that is embedded in the cell membrane. Now during the pathway, PIC uh, can be broken down to PIP2 because this is three phosphate group. One phosphate is released, it will become PIP2. Now normally from PIP2 to PIP3, there is an intermediate con condition that is PIC kinase, and that thing is present. Now there is another protein called P10 which can revert this PIP3 back to PIP2. So, in this case, we can say that P10 is actually going against the functionality of P PI3 kinase. That's why we can see it here that in this case, P10 is tend to inhibit the activation of PI3 kinase to AKT. So, the AKT activation by PI3 kinase is controlled by P10 activity. P10 can block the activation of AKT by PI3 kinase. Okay. So that is the pathway. Once all these things there, mTOR is activated, it will finally lead to the cell for living, proliferation and survival. So that's it guys and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.